Howdy chaps and welcome back to another fantastic episode. This is going to be called Operation Super Mega Tightwad. Uh, we are going to attempt to make the lower half of an EJ door skin. Let's get to it. Alrighty, I'll run you back. Uh, I'll give you a bit of an update. I have started a little bit of side work on this, just dug the lead out, started cleaning it up. The old boy has started cleaning out the inside, making it all pretty in there. Uh, I fired up the engine yesterday, put a clip in now. No, you know, still lives. And the alternator works astonishingly. Right, still runs surprisingly well, and of course, you know, you got to right fire this up. Here. Yeah, but then of course I was like, you know, six is good, but V8 is better. So I went over there and fired up the V8 that's probably going to find its way into it, uh, and I'll put that clip in now. Here we go, see I woke them all up yesterday. Um, if I had unlimited time and a bit more fuel, I would have probably fired up the radial, but I need to get an oil line for that, so I wasn't gonna do that. Um, so it's all, everything's progressing. This car's getting cleaned out. It's a beautiful floor in it. The driver's floor is about the only bad thing in the whole car. Um, still haven't sorted the roof out yet, but you know, it's in the works. Um, I have to give huge, huge shout out to Sheet Metal Australia that are in Lonsdale. It's a flag going around my head. Um, Sheet Metal Australia, they have been doing some fantastic work for me on this tank. They made my front guards, they've made the, um, I guess you call them fuel tank shields, but they also have the stabilizing mount for the engine on the back. I'll show you a, a photo of that now. Yeah, so they've been unbelievably talented at making stuff. Um, I know there's a few purists out there going, ooh, not an original piece. Um, but honestly, the original pieces are really rusty and nearly always damaged and twisted and have oxy marks in them where the rivets have been cut off with an oxy and then blown through. They're just trash, really, and all they're good for is templates. Um, so I had new ones made. Yeah, upset the purists is not original steel, but there is actually a lot of original steel in that tank. Uh, just sometimes it's not that practical. Um, so yeah, I'll chuck the photo up there, and um, they came out amazing. Actually, came under quote. Love that kind of stuff. They, they've been doing basically all the sheet metal that's on the outside of the tank that needs to be really good, and I can't believe how good they can do it. Um, they're probably going to be the mob who make the rear storage bins for the back of the tank as well. I'll be giving them some more challenging stuff soon to see how good they really are. Um, but they've been absolutely smashing it out of the park and I can't give them enough um, credit. Sheet Metal Australia, they're down the road and on up. Absolutely amazing. Um, the guys in there. So yeah, I'll show you what I've been up to with the EJ. Yeah, but at the moment, so you just forgot that the camera can zoom in. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so I dug the dug the lead out um, out of here yesterday. Oh, just quick update on the XW because you know I am going to progress with this. Um, so I dug that out. I probably got to get. Don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just because of the way it's been cut, it's going to make it a bit interesting. But yes, yeah, so I got that out. I had to get the lead out no matter what happened. Um, Bit of a shame that what they've done there, but oh well, that's what you get. I suppose when it was a wreck yard, nobody cared. Now, Dad's been cleaning out the boot. Look how good this boot floor is. Like, it's actually got most of the back of the car in it. 
all be it filthy and you know somebody hacked that out but you don't it's not the end of the world but seriously like it is a good car it's a shame it got could you imagine how good it was before the roof was damaged <sighs> now look at that floor unbelievable oh and uh, in the last video I mentioned that I had a couple of single rails for sale uh, they sold almost immediately after the video went up I got a message and a lovely chap came and bought them in like 10 seconds so I was like well that solves that problem <coughs> so yes looking pretty lovely I mean look how good it is behind there I just get over it can't get over it so yes that still runs but this is not I, I, I get some people like six cylinders but that is just not me unless it's a grey motor then it is me um, but I think if it's an old Falcon it's got to be V8 um, as you would agree from the clips you just listened to I just don't know it's amazing it runs and it runs super smoothly so I just don't know what to do with it it's only a 221 so it's not exactly it's not even a 200 it's not even a 250 should I say um, and it's not even a 252V so it's, it's not really a good six cylinder anyway I don't know if somebody wanted to actually buy that off me I'd probably would let it go I just you know, it's not really worth much to me. Kept my single rail. Don't talk about it. <clears throat> and uh, these are the... So that's the original. And that's what they made. Unbelievable. They just did all the holes and everything. But this is what I was talking about. See how the original stuff was always torched? And slightly buggered. So I took the top engine deck off the tank. This is going to be a bit of an update and everything again. That was difficult. A bit more light in here. So those shields, they go there and there. And I've got a lot of my... I don't know if this is going to zoom in. Is that going to work? And I've got a lot of those linkage rods in there. I finally got the measurements for the short one, so I can cut that down today. But yeah, I worked it out that the clutch fork only has one inch of travel. It doesn't actually go far at all. It's like on, off. That's all it is. And I think somebody did comment a lot of information on that, which I was quite happy about. So, Operation Super Mega Tight, what is a go? Oh, right in the ear holes. Um, you might go, did you put an old door skin on the top half of that? You're right, I sure did. Um, because I found out at Mum and Dad's place I had stashed about eight EJ doors that I forgot about. You anyway, know, you never know. <laughs> Came in handy. So I refused to pay through the nose for a door skin for one of these. Um, and I just, I know somebody offered me um, a set that had been on and then off, I think. But I just can't get the time to go get them. So, it's, yeah, it's just not practical. Plus, my ute's not registered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and I thought this might make a good video. So, I have used the top half of an original door skin, which was pretty good. Obviously, because it's back on there. It wasn't rusty. And anywhere it did have some surface rust, did treat it. So, it's all good. So, now I'm going to attempt, I don't know if this is going to be successful, to make the bottom half of the door skin. I have a 0.8 sheet here because the door skin, the doors are made of 0.8 steel, it's not actually one. I tend to use one because it's easier for rust repairs but it's actually 0.8 millimeters and I thought using the right thickness it's probably going to fold a little bit easier around corners so I thought well, the sheet of metal cost nothing, well, virtually nothing. The top door skin cost nothing. So, if it works, this is a seriously cheap door skin. If it fails, well, then I'll go get a door skin, won't I? You know, I've got nothing, nothing to lose by trying. Um, so, here goes nothing. We're going to put this up here, trace around it, and give herself about oh, 
10 millimeters all the way around the edges and then we've got to try and fold all those edges and there's a lot of curves there front door is a bit a lot easier because it's there's only one curve on one corner the rest is fairly straight so it'll be a bit of tweaking rolling probably some shrinking and stretching because the curves got to go down a corner as well so this will be a bit of a uh, I'll give you updates as I go along but next step is to well actually the first step was to put the top pull this door skin off the other door and then obviously I heated up the edges folded the lip back around hammered it flat and cleaned up the insides treated this side and then put this on as if it was a normal door skin it's a little bit you know not pretty on the inside but that's because the door skin's been on and off but it, do, it, is in, it is actually the top half is very very straight so that's what I was happy about so now the next step is as if we're putting a half skin on because yeah let's roll And there we have it. I've just sprayed the template. So you basically get a pretty damn good outline of the door. And obviously I've got my scribe over there or uh, vernier calipers or whatever you want to call them. Set them to 10 millimeters. And was using the inside diameter scraper and run it around. So I know that I need to cut this sheet to there and probably give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And cut this to about here just to be safe. Give myself a bit more that I need and then I can start to somehow very carefully cut this curve and the basic skin out and then I've got to fold that around with well I don't have any rolling machines I have a hammer and dolly uh, so this is going to be I mean ultimately if you had you know decent equipment which I don't um, you could just put that through a bead roller and just do it and it would probably be a lot easier but if you're like me and you don't have that equipment you're going to struggle like I am <laughs> so we can struggle together all right I'll see how I go with this and I'll see you in a second like I said this is probably gonna look like dog poo as I uh, work it but hopefully by the end it might not look too crap um, thank God for genuine tank parts look at that seem got the number stamped in it you can see it that's um basically if you want to drain the, the gearbox in the tank that you take this plate off the floor but I was like I need a 10 millimeter thick piece of steel that's round so I can do this so what I've been doing is getting this clamping in there tapping around and I've got my edge obviously I will need to hammer and dolly this a little better and it'll probably need to go through a shrinker because the door skin is going to have to curve so while this I mean it's flimsy as all hell right now but once it's got this lip it will actually get a hell of a lot stronger so now that I've got my corner I can find a nice spot on this because it's actually not actually round find a maybe use that bit but yeah I can slowly clamp it tap it clamp it tap it as I get my curve and then I can use a slightly smaller I think this actually might be the same curve as that the end so We'll just have to play it by ear, but that's what I'm doing. And I'll clean this up if I have successfully made this door skin work. Now let's get this straight. By no means is this perfect. Um, I reckon if I was to put a fold across the top like you normally buy door skins 
it wouldn't have that curve in it but doesn't matter it's good enough um, considering it was about one one hundredth the price um, and I've done this with a panel beating hammer a dolly a pair of ice grips a curved piece of metal and another one I've done that whole thing with that so you can do it with very minimal tools as long as you have a crap load of patience <laughs> and be aware that oh and I use a shrinker stretcher there is one tool I do have which I do recommend that every single person at home go get because like this bit here you don't get the stand because I made that but you get the top bit that's only a couple of hundred bucks like that could be the best money you ever spend on any tool ever um, albeit I would have preferred to have one with a jaw had a bit more depth on it but that's about it but yes very basic tools I mean you don't really need that if you're willing to hammer and dolly the crap out of it but yeah we're going to sit the skin the frame in now so if I put that down if I had two my hands it's perfect yeah not perfect but I reckon when it's on it it will flatten right out um, so all I did was shrink through here and a little bit there and I had to heat up this end a little bit too because it's very tight to go around there but realistically can be done and I suppose the same sort of method can be done if you were just doing a small say like on an EJEH where they rust the bottom of the doors off you could do a little half moon and basically copy the same exact style but I'll sit that in there and see how we're looking Alrighty, so what I've done is I've marked out where it sat, scribed a line, and I've cut back to where it's going to be, and then that's going to overlap. But the only reason I do that is so that in case you know you cut that big long line and then you go to put your thing on and you got it slightly wonky and you end up with a massive gap, this way you can actually pull this middle piece out instead of being under here. So obviously, this will be where a butt joint is. And then, I mean, if you didn't feel confident, you could overlap them, but you shouldn't. Um, so then you can just run a blade along, cut between them, and you'll get it 100%. And you'll only have the gap of the blade rather than potentially having a big wonky... I mean, you could cut that, it'd probably be fine, but you do run the risk of things have moved around a little bit. That way, this eliminates the, oh my God, I've screwed up factor. So you just cut this a little bit, because that's easy to rectify. It's not going to warp too bad if you have a huge gap. But along the middle you cut that after you've got it sort of partly tacked on. Alrighty, um not as terrible as I was expecting. And I can't blame any other company for this. I made that skin. So if it doesn't fit, it's my fault. Um I'm pretty sure that I'll have to do some welding around the edges and grinding and stuff once it's a bolted to the car to ensure maximum gappage um, but now see what I did was I took the chunk out of there so that can be butt welded there and then I've overlapped it just to you know hold the skin from warping and moving especially while I was hammering dollying it so now I can come along and just carefully run a blade through there bit by bit do a couple of tacks push it through da -da 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 -da, and um, work my way along this door um, yeah that's gonna suck um, and I'm certain that's gonna warp absolutely certain because there is zero strength in the middle of this door it's not terrible it's a bit high in the middle so I'm certain this door is gonna end up with a full skim of filler at the end um, but when you're not rich and you're pretty good at making do, we're going to make do. At least the bottom of the door isn't packed full of bogs, so that's something. But, I mean, if you did a half skin, which is all you can do these days, as far as I'm aware, um, you will be doing exactly the same thing, except you won't be making the door skin. Um, I think the door skins are about 120 bucks for a rear. Um, but considering that entire sheet of steel... I don't think it was a whole lot of money maybe 10 bucks or something 
So, I mean, if you've got a bit of time up your sleeve, you can just do it yourself. So, yeah. Now I'm going to very carefully cut and weld that along. Alrighty, there we go. So you basically just cut through and then use these, straighten it up, get them level. Usually your finger's pretty good. And you just, so that's level, and just tack. And then what I'm going to do is continue, I'll recut through that and I'll keep going along. And then once it's all um, basically like that the whole way along, then I can pull that middle piece out and then slowly but surely, very slowly, tack in between and keep going until um, the entire thing is welded. I mean, ultimately, the way other people could have done this was have this sort of loosely attached and then done all the making and done the tacking and then taken the whole skin back off as one big piece and then you could have probably um, TIG welded all together and metal finished and blah 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 but I mean let's be real I'm only supposed to be helping these hints are only supposed to be helping the guy at home yeah, if you're a professional you'll probably do things totally differently um, so I was just thinking about my early videos they're only intended to help the average Joe at home they weren't intended to help the professional who obviously knows how to do it better than me <laughs> So, um, there we go, Just keep doing that all the way along. And that is done, and then you just reach in, so that was about there. And usually it, it might still be a little bit attached, but you know, a bit of jiggling, and that comes clean out. So that's why I cut the ends, if you were wondering. For those of you playing at home, that way you can actually get it out, because it was actually behind there, you wouldn't get it out. But that can now go over there and now you have a perfect sort of seam to do a butt join. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to attempt to weld this carefully. I'm going to grind these down and tack again. It could take some time. I don't know if I'll get it all done in this video, but I'll get to as far as I can. I am on limited time on the weekends. so. We shall just play it by ear. But that's not too bad. I was thinking to myself as I go along going, you know, I never profess to be good at this. I just profess to be okay at it. And even if, you know, you sort of don't like your own work, and I don't like my own work, you yourself are your biggest critic. Um, I think in time. And another thing about critics is you tend to find the people with the loudest voice criticizing are the ones who never show their work so and that's actually sort of half why I stopped doing tons and tons of rust repair videos because I was getting wildly criticized and I was just like you obviously don't get it so I'm just gonna stop it because it's that simple and I thought about giving up YouTube multiple times but um, I still enjoy it and occasionally I can do things like this I didn't even know if I could make a door skin I suspect that I could but you just don't know until you try. So I'm going to try and keep welding this. It is a little bit high here, but that's not too bad. Actually, this being a bit high is good because you can tap it down. But if it was a bit low, then you're going to be putting tons of bog in it. So high is good, low is bad. And even with metal um, metal finishing, you've got to bring the steel up so you can bring it back down. You can't do it the other way around. Um, just things I learned at trade school and for those playing at home if you wanted a trade that was really really good panel bedding has been pretty good and is always in demand you'll never not have a job if you're good <laughs> all right I'm gonna keep welding I'll see you in a second alrighty champs I'm gonna have to leave it there unfortunately you won't get me seeing this finish but I did this a little bit not too bad it's gonna have a high spot in it running down the door but that's better than a big low spot um, so I've just basically because I'm a family man <laughs> I've actually run out of time for the day so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, it's back to sort of normal stuff um, but yes we made a door skin from scratch and fitted it and it didn't turn out too rubbish and of course yeah it's just tack 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 grind tack grind tack grind tack grind tack um, for hours on end uh, and I'm going to go home and have some dinner. So I'll see you on the next one, chaps.